So you tweeted you were trying to get Frank Clark here in the off season. How excited are you to have him part of this defense now? <clears throat> I mean, it's dope. You know what I mean? You get an opportunity to get a, you know, a guy who's been playing a game at a high level for a long time. Um, somebody that's been in this building before, you know what I mean? You know how things goes around here. And, um, you know, I'm sure he'll say, I'm sure a lot of people say, you know, that year he had before he was traded to, to, to the Chiefs, I mean, it was probably one of the best years a D lineman's ever had here. So um, for him, just to let him come back in here, do his thing, let him be himself, you know what I mean? That's, that's what this place is all about. So I'm excited about it, you know what I mean? So um, hopefully, you know, he goes out there, he continues to make the impact that he's made his whole career here. And, you know, I look like another great recruiter again. How did you guys uh, get to know each other? Because you didn't overlap here in Seattle, did you? I mean, we're the same draft class. So, um, you know, we all been around each other before. I mean, it's not like the 60s where guys don't hang out and see each other in the off season and stuff like that. Like, we always, you know, see each other. Everybody has mutual friends. And, um, you know, you respect each other's game. And, you know, I mean, um, I think Frank's a three-time pro bowler, and so am I. So, you know, great players respect great players. How close was it that they were going to sign him, you think? How close what? Did it get close? You said you wanted him here before the season. I don't know. I'm not in there. You know, I just give my opinions. You know what I mean? So if you got uh, access to John and tell John, let me in the, in the off-season meeting rooms and just let me know. Wait. Walter Jones and J.J. Watt both tweeted today that they want the Seahawks throwbacks to be permanent. What are your thoughts? I mean, I love them. You know what I mean? Um, why, why not? You know, I mean, I, I just remember, I feel like for me growing up, you know, for me, of course, you know, Walter Jones, those guys. But, like, for me, I just remember Ricky Waters, you know what I mean, in that uniform. And I was just like, that's that's a dope uniform, you know what I mean? And he had the nasal strip and, and all that. And it's just like, you see it. And I think I seen the uniforms two years ago. I was able to go out there and I got to see them two years ago. And I've just been telling EK now, I'm just like, hopefully I can just be around to play in those, and um, I'm, I'm excited about it. I mean, if they become full-time, cool. If not, I'm with whatever. I don't make those decisions, but um, if they ask me, I'll sure, you know, put my input in. When it comes to Cleveland, they certainly lean heavily on their run game, but what do you know to be true about how they utilize wide receivers and, and that passing game? I mean, those guys, uh, they can throw the ball, too. Now, don't, don't get it twisted. Uh, you know, um, they've had, you know, of course, you know, a couple backup quarterbacks that played a couple games. They had a rainy game. So uh, those guys are definitely, they can make the plays. They can definitely do those things. Coop has always been one of the best receivers in the league. Um, you know, um, they got Elijah Moore and, you know, Donovan People Jones and, and, and Keese. Um, so they had a weapons. You can't forget about Njoku. You know, he's one of the highest paid tight ends in the league. So. Um, those guys have weapons to get it done in the, in the past game, too. But um, they've been, you know, relying on the run game. And um, luckily for us, that's what we've been good at. Their completion percentage isn't very high, though. But you've obviously watched more film than I have. Is it more of just the circumstances? You mentioned the rain game and, and some other things. I think so. You know what I mean? I think they still have big plays in and out of the game. And it might not be your normal, you know, past games. But um, I think those guys can, you know, get yards after the catch. They get screens. and you know, those type of things too. But um, they take their shots here and there and they're, you know, meticulous on the way, on the way they go about it. As a defensive back who likes to be physical but maybe isn't the biggest guy, how much do you respect the way Spoon goes out and hits guys? I love it. You know what I mean? I love it. I'll never forget. Um, I think it might have been like his second or third game here and when he was playing nickel. And my mom called me after the game. She was like, he played, he played kind of like how you play. And I'm just like, I could see that because, you know, I played nickel and stuff like that. And, you know, she just kind of puts two and two together. But he's doing that. You know, he says he's 180, but he's doing that 175 pounds soaking wet. So um, I think it's impressive. I love it. It brings energy. It brings juice. And um, it's just a competition factor between, you know, me, him, and Maul, and, you know, even Jay Love. And, you know, now Trey Brown, he wants to get into it. So. It's just one of those things where, like, guys are really going out there, you know, and just trying to go out there and be as physical as possible and put that on tape. And Spoon was saying it the whole game. He was like, no, nah, you and Maul are getting it. I want to get I want to get in on that. He made it He made it known. He got in on that real quick. What kind of 
of mentality does it take for a nickel to be that willing to go stick your head in a run play and run into the backfield and get into the mess that's the line of scrimmage and be as willing as he seems to be at doing that part of the game? I mean, you have to at nickel. You know, I mean, you're a Sam linebacker that can cover. So um, you have to be. I mean, if you didn't have that mindset, I don't think you could play nickel. So um, not taking away from anything for Spoon. It's just that's what that position is. That position is you have to cover. You got to know run gaps. You got to be smart. You got to make calls. So um, it's just one of those positions where, you know, I think for me, I would say it's probably the hardest position on the defensive on the defensive side of the ball to me. You know, I mean I've seen, you know, elite corners try to go inside and they like, oh no, I can't do this. You know, what I mean it's too much space. So um to be able to cover all that space, be physical, make tackles, no run gaps. You know, what I mean it's special what he's doing as a rookie that missed a lot of time during training camp. Do you still think that's an undervalued position or under regarded position? No question about it. And, you know, I'll go to the grave about that all the time. You know, it's it's a lot of guys that play that nickel position that should have been pro bowlers before and maybe all pro guys. But you don't get the interceptions that, you know, corners get. You know, um, you don't get all those ops. But, you know, you do get fumbles and fumble recoveries and tackle for losses. And those things should count up. And, um, you know, maybe one day they'll have uh, all pro ballot for a nickel or Pro Bowl ballot for a nickel to get in there where they're not just looked at as another corner. When it comes to Spoon, certainly he's got the instincts, but is there something exceptional about the technique that allows him to deliver those hits? I mean, he's been doing it since college, so I don't think it's nothing that we taught him here. You know what I mean? I think he just brought another mentality of that's who he is. You know what I mean? He showed you who he was in college, and he continues to do it. So, um, you know, my thing is, you know, for him just to be smart and know that, you know, you take your shots when you have your shots and, you you know, you be a sure tackler at other other moments in the game. So, um, I mean, I'm just, I'm excited about him. I've been excited about him since we drafted him. So, um, the sky's the limit for the kid, for sure. Can you talk about just his dedication to be the best, A, and B, his willingness to do anything for the team? No. I mean, that's just his competitive nature. I mean, I'm sure you guys have seen him around here multiple times like that's his competitive nature he thinks he's the best and he wants to be the best and in his mind he is the best so um you know he just vibes out to his own world he is himself he you know he doesn't make excuses for who he is you know what i mean and i think he's come to a perfect place that lets him be himself so um the competitive nature the juice the you know whatever he has he has that it factor and it, it's been dope for me to see it and you know, I mean, when these guys come in as rookies, I tell them to be their self. Just be them. You know, I mean, we'll we'll figure it out. You know, I'm a guy. I've been around a long time, so I can I can deal with pretty much any type of person as long as you're willing to love football and go out and dedicate yourself to it. Clint was saying yesterday that when he looks at you know what you guys have been doing on defense last month or so, what what jumps out first is just how physical you guys are. You know, the whole unit front to back. Does it feel different this year than past years? Just the overall physicality of this group. I think so. You know, I mean, I think, um, you know, I think we just kind of taking that, you know, mentality of, you know, seeing, you know, the old videos and seeing all that stuff where, you know, we want to be physical. I mean, we've not that we haven't tried to be physical, but I feel like this year people see on tape, see us flying around, they seeing guys get hit. And, you know, I mean, that, you know, that team see that. They see that the week of preparation, they like, okay, these guys are, they thudding up, you know what I mean? You got JB, you got Bobby, you got all our D linemen. Um, you got us in the back end that you got to deal with. So for us, you know, we just try to take these ops to, to just go play the game we love, be blessed, we're healthy enough to do it. And um, I think it's just one of those things, you know, you see one guy do it, you want to go compete and you want to go be the most physical player out there. Old videos, you mean like old like Seahawks videos, like Legion of Boom stuff? I mean, Man, we've seen all of that, but I mean, it's other videos. I'm a, bro, I'm a football, like, historian, you know what I mean? So for me, I watch all those stuff, you know what I mean? Uh, you see, you know, Ryan Clark is like a mentor for me. So, like, you see RC and you see, you know, all those different videos. So for me, I might just watch a video. Like last year, I told you I watched a video of Dion the night before a game, and I got a pick and I held a ball up. It's just, you, it's just, it's the respect that you show to those people. and. When you make a big hit and 
you know, you get Cam Chancellor to text you after the game, I mean, I think, you you know, you're doing something. So um, you always want that kind of support from your peers. And um, I think that's what's been cool about it. Yeah. What hit was? Hey, bro, you nosy, bro. <laughs> Pipe down, you feel me? Bro? Just know, it. that's what it is, though. It's, it's one of those things where you want that respect. And, you know, you want to get on Twitter after the game and you see people like, okay, like, these guys are physical. But, you know, I've I've heard the whole deal, you know, of, you know, people talking about us as a defense early in the season and, you know, people talking about, you know, you don't want to tackle and this and that. So, you know, we hear that stuff. So we just go, we go mind our business and, you know, we let people do their talking and, you know, don't flip flop when we start playing good. Speaking of Jordan there a little bit, you could make an argument he wouldn't have even been back by this point in the year, given the injury he had as late in the year as he had it. To have the start to the year he had, mm -hmm. has, has had the six games that he's got under his belt, the way he's played, how impressed are you with all of that? I mean, it's phenomenal. I mean, to think about a guy that probably had surgery, what, in January and it's October, nine months, you know what I mean? He's out there playing and, you know, um, he's playing at a high level. And you can just tell how locked in he is. His mentality is totally different this year than it's been any other year in the past. And I don't know exactly what I can, what we can attest to that, but I just think he's comfortable with who he is, you know what I mean? I think he's seeing things clear and he's just playing fast. And when you do those type of things, good things happen to you. And um, I mean, I'm excited for him. You know, I mean, he's really, I feel like he's come out of his shell and he's being goofy. He's running around, he's talking trash. You know, I mean, he's doing those certain things. And even doing a walkthrough, you can see him like run full speed in the walkthrough rep and simulate that he's in the game. And you like, that. Yeah, I seen him do that in the game. So he probably is going to do that. But um, it's been impressive to see, and I'm, I'm excited for him to keep going. Just about as confident as you guys have felt on defense in a while as well? well I'm not going to go for the trick questions, you know what I mean? Because as soon as I say that, we go have give a bad play, y'all will be killing us next week. So I'm just going to thug it out, and, you know, we're going to do our thing. We're just going to enjoy being around each other, enjoy the, the brotherhood, the camaraderie that we have. And, um, you know, we just keep proving our daughters wrong every week. Is this the most fun you've had as a defense, this stretch that you I think this is the most fun I've had as a defense probably since 2019 where, you know, when I got here, we just had guys on defense where we felt like, you know, we were going to go and play a good game. And we didn't always play great, but it was that camaraderie of, you know, we all rock with each other and, hey, this is what it is. You know what I mean? It's going to be on us and it's on us to go play great. So um, we're definitely having fun. I mean, you can see it on the film. We're having a lot of fun. We're enjoying being around each other. So. Um, let's just keep it up. Did you get a PBU for that uh, seam ball? Did Jamal get that? Did you guys have to debate over who gets that? I don't know, bro. They said they gave it to me, but I also didn't get my one in the first quarter when I hit uh, Rondell Moore. So I don't know, bro. You know, I think everybody out to get me. So um, <laughs> I would have, I would have caught it if it would have been a good throw. Uh, <laughs> but you know. Like I say, everybody's out to get me. I'm just going to keep doing my thing. And um, what can I say? Pick 200, draft 2015, three-time Pro Bowl is still going. <laughs>